Hi everyone, this is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish. Believe it or not, this is soap. Yes, these are my recent soap bars that I made using a special technique. It's basically a white plain bar of soap that I've decorated with sponged mica and then I've put another layer of clear soap over the top. If you have a look from the side, you can see that it's a two layered soap, but it has this amazing color. Uh, and the reason for this is I sponged on my mica using uh, some little finger sponges. I used a similar technique recently when I made my Easter egg soap bars and I just loved it so much. I thought I'd give it another go. This is one I did with the leftover mica from my Easter egg soap bars and I've been using it in the shower. And take a look at this, see how thin it is because I've nearly used it all up and yet it's still got its full color because it's got two layers and each layer is sort of wearing away but the mica layer in the middle is the last part to wear away so right down to you know a very small part of the soap you still get the beautiful color it's awesome this video is part of my tweak of the week series where i share with you everyday items and tools from other crafts and hobbies that with a slight tweak can be used for soap making and other craft projects so I've got a special playlist with all my tweak of the weeks in them. Don't forget to check them out later and don't forget to like and subscribe if you love what we do. Okay, time to get started. I'm just going to jump straight in here. I've got everything that I need laid out already. I've even pre-made some soap bars, uh, just some little 50 gram soap bars here. See, they're not uh, huge, but that's because they're not complete. Uh, I've just got two soap bars that we're going to do today. I've got all the micas that I'm going to use, just the micas from the color wheel so I can make a beautiful rainbow pattern. Uh, I have these little finger sponges. So these are normally used for scrapbooking, you know, for stamping and inks and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to use them with my soap making today. I've got a paint palette and I also have, do you recognize these? These are lip gloss brushes that you apply your lip gloss with, but I'm using them today as paint brushes. I have some vegetable glycerin, very important for mixing up my mica paint. And I also have, I haven't poured it out yet because it tends to evaporate, uh, my uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol is the technical name. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of that. Okay, so the first thing is to mix up my mica soap paint. So I'm just going to add a little bit of mica to all the wells of this paint palette. Uh, you'll notice I'm not weighing it out or measuring it out. I don't tend to, it's, I guess it's normally like when you're mixing your own paints, you've, um, you just sort of get a gist for, you know, the, um, the thickness that you prefer. Uh, sometimes if I'm going to brush on the mica, I want it a little bit runnier. Um, sometimes I want it a little bit thicker. So, just going to eyeball it today. And plus I'm just showing you guys how to do it. If I was doing like a, a really important project, uh, obviously I'd measure it all out, but for today, that's fine. So uh, get a little bit of mica and then I wanna add some vegetable glycerin and some alcohol to it at a ratio of two to one glycerin to alcohol. So in this case today, I'm putting in six drops of glycerin into um, each one of these wells. And that means I'm going to add three drops of alcohol as well. Um, I've, I've worked a little bit on coming up with this uh, sort of mica paint that I used for my soap. I've done a little bit of experimenting. Um, I've used, you know, just solely vegetable glycerin before and I've used just solely um, alcohol before uh, and I find a combination of the two is is where you find your real sweet spot uh, vegetable glycerin it's hard to tell from here but it's actually quite gluggy and it will never fully evaporate um, so which is which is kind of good for for a paint but it, it's really really thick um, alcohol on the other hand perfectly runny not a problem but it evaporates so quick i was constantly having to rehydrate my my paint and then it was sort of 
a little bit runny and a little bit thick and it just wasn't consistent but I found that if you add the glycerin and the alcohol you get this combination of um, not too dry but not too runny it sort of stays wet for the entirety of the time that you need to do your project and it just works really really well so that's my little recipe for your how to make your own mica paint for soap uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm using these little lip gloss brushes. They're really great for, you know, applying the paint to the soap, but also I can apply it to my little sponges here. And I always have a piece of um, paper towel on hand just to um, sponge off any of the excess on your sponges. And this is the reason why I like using these sponges so much. Uh, when I applied the paint before just with the brush it was a little bit streaky it was a little bit uneven but as soon as I dab over it with these little finger sponges it manages to distribute the paint to the surface so evenly and so beautifully that you just get this great even coverage you can't see any of the white coming through you can't see any streaks there's a little bit of texture from the sponge but that's okay and you're also able to with little effort blend colors together and uh, with also with little uh, a small amount of paint blend colors together you don't have to heap on a ton of paint just to blend the colors together um because we we really do want you know the barest minimum of mica really to um to do this with if you if your mica is too thick then you're going to have trouble when you apply your clear layer it's not going to stick or it's going to start floating to the top or you're going to have all sorts of trouble so what I really love about these finger sponges and why I sort of have tweaked them to use in my soap making instead of in in card making and scrapbooking is um, how it applies the mica paint so beautifully and evenly and the beautiful blending effect you can do with it as well so for my first bar of soap, I'm just doing a, a basic rainbow pattern, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, I've skipped the indigo, and then the violet. Um, and, and, you know, they're the same colours as the colour wheel as well. I'm just going around the colour wheel because they're the colours that blend together, you know, as, um, as they change, as you mix two colours together and the colours that you get in the middle. Uh, and I'm really liking this. It's... Um, coming out really pretty you gotta be careful with the yellow normally I do the yellow first and I forgot this time around you don't want to get too many of the other colors on your yellow sponge um, so if you can remember do your yellow first and then sort of blend the other colors into that so um, that you don't ruin your sponge because <laughs> if you get if you get the green and the orange stuck on it you know then it tends to ruin your yellow from then on so so this is to coming together nicely. I'm really loving that. Look at that. I'll give you a close-up view. It's a bit wet. That's why it's got such a sheen to it. But there we go. The um, As you can see, the purple and the blue are a little bit more watery. And even the green, a little bit more watery uh, than the red and the orange. <clears throat> and that's sort of coming out as well I was able to blend them together a little bit better so maybe you do want your paint a little bit more on the watery side than on the gluggy side I'm now on to my second bar of soap and um, I did remember to start with the yellow first this time I'm going to for a circular pattern this time uh, so I've started with the yellow in the center and then I'm moving out <clears throat> in the same um, order as I did before um, yellow orange red purple blue green in this case it's really really pretty it's still rainbowy just a, a different sort of shape because we're going with the round and I'm doing my best to sort of blend the colors together as well hmm, it's coming along nicely as you can see it's quite easy there's not a lot of effort involved you can just get all um, get all creative and see what you can come up with and there we go those are finished i'm gonna to have to let that dry overnight because it needs to be really dry so pop them somewhere out of the way where they'll be nice and safe and they can dry oh you know at least half a day overnight preferably um, here they are the next day for me as you can see they're um nice and dry they've got an even sheen and they're so pretty and shiny 
that's how shiny they're going to look when they're wet too. It's going to be so amazing when you're actually using one. Um, I'm going to put them back into the mold that I made them in so I can pour a clear layer on top to seal them. Uh, without the clear layer, you'd be able to smudge this with your fingers and you'd also, it'll just wash off the first time you use it in the shower. So it definitely needs that clear layer. Uh, so I'm putting them back into uh, the mold cavities, doing my best not to touch them so I don't smudge the mica. Just making sure they're in there and it looks good. Uh, and I'm going to pour probably another 30 grams or so on top. They're already a 50 gram soap. If I add 30 grams, uh, that'll be an 80 gram soap, which is a really good size. I'm using a clear melt and pour soap base for my top layer and more specifically an ultra clear melt and pour soap base, um, which is specifically designed to give you a really clear finish because I really want to see these beautiful colors very clearly. I'm also adding just a teeny tiny bit of blue soap dye to my clear, just the end of the skewer here. I don't really want the soap to go blue, but I just want to give it a blue tinge as opposed to a yellow tinge because that really helps with the clarity too. I'm not scenting this clear part because I did scent the, um, the base soap, so I don't think I need any more scent. Uh, it's important to work quickly because if you let the soap cool too much, it won't stick to um, the base soap bar. And I'm deliberately not spraying this with alcohol before I start because it will smudge the mica. So also to avoid smudging the mica, I am pouring the soap onto a spoon, which I am directing down the side of the mold cavity. And then as you can see, it's just filtering across the surface of the soap. It is just very gently covering the mica. I'm just topping it up a little bit more. Um, I can spray it with alcohol now because the mica is fully covered just to get rid of any of the bubbles, but do not spray the mica with alcohol before you start. The, the mica needs to be dry when the soap hits it. So there we go. I think that went quite well. I haven't got any smudges that I can see. Um, I'm just spritzing that to get rid of those bubbles. I'm going to let it set um, just as long as you normally let the soap set and I'll be along soon to demold it for you. Okay, it's time to demold it. Drum roll, finger drum roll. There we go. Uh, they are looking amazing. Here's a little bit of the clear soap that dropped. Um, just look how clear that is. That, that is like really clear soap. It's uh, And I think the blue tint does really make it even, even clearer. It really does help it along. Um, so this is fully set. Just going to ease it out of the mold cavity. It's looking good. There you go. As you can see, uh, there are two layers there and the top layer is very clear and shiny. Um, that's just stunning. And here's our other rainbow one. Again, we've got the white base bar of soap covered in the clear with that beautiful layer of mica in between. Ready for the shower or the bath for whichever lucky family member scores it. Uh, if you want to, you can sort of bevel the edges because there is like a slight upturn at the edges. Um, you can just use a little soap beveler just to bevel it off if you want. I use this one. It's um it's made of acrylic, but it actually works quite well. It's just got sort of like a little I suppose holder template that you um push your soap into and then just use another piece of acrylic uh to score along the edge and um just bevel the the edge off. And it works quite well. Here we go. Last edge. Just wipe off any of the crumbs. Oh, that side I didn't do very well. Here we go. Okay, and you get these really cool shavings too, which you could use for another project if you wanted to. There it is. Now with beautiful beveled edges, these are just going to 
look so amazing. I mean, these aren't even wet. Normally, you know, when you get a clear soap and you want to show people how they look, you spray it with alcohol um, to show them what it'll look like. I haven't even sprayed these. This is just how they look normally. Oh, here we go. Let's spray this one now. It looks the same, just a bit more glistening. But yeah, there we go. They are gonna look amazing as you're using them away and they'll be so much fun. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our tweak of the week and um, give this a go yourself, sponged mica soaps. They're beautiful and gorgeous. Don't forget to visit thedancingsoapdish.com for more great tutorials and other helpful hints. And uh, thanks guys, enjoy.